Hi, Kelly. Yeah, Florida has 15 casinos that make a $7.5 billion economic impact on Florida, according to the American Gaming Association. Well, now gaming companies are throwing millions at political efforts in Florida to expand that state's opportunities for betting. Currently, a deal made by Florida's governor allows the Seminole Tribe, which owns the Hard Rock brand, a near monopoly in the state. But allowing more licensees would benefit operators like Penn National, it offers off-track wagering north of Orlando. Las Vegas Sands has invested $17 million in a political committee to get initiatives on the state ballot, asking voters to approve new casinos in their state. DraftKings and FanDuel spent $10 million apiece, according to reporting from the Miami Herald, which counted $62 million from these companies ahead of a July 1st deadline that would have lowered the amount of money permitted for companies to spend on citizen ballot initiatives. It would have lowered it to $3,000 per company. A federal judge blocked that rule from taking effect, but the investments illustrate why Florida is considered a potential gaming super state. And joining us now for an exclusive, and by the way, her first ever interview on CNBC, Amy Howe, who has just been named interim CEO of FanDuel. And it's so great to see you, Amy, congratulations. Thank you so much, Contessa, it's great to be here. And you're coming into the sports betting industry, which is dominated by men for men. What opportunities do you see both to expand leadership of women in this space and to appeal and cater to women as customers? Yeah, listen, uh, as you can imagine, as a, a senior female executive, it's a topic that I care deeply about. I've, I've had the privilege of leading companies and single-handedly influencing the outcome around gender diversity. And you just, you see the results right around the culture and the performance of our organization. Um, let me start on the executive side, it, you know, sitting here as the, the leader of FanDuel, I'm incredibly proud to say that four of our top 10 executives are incredibly talented women, right? Those are stats that rival any tech company, let alone some of the companies in our space. Um, and you've seen the evidence, right? There's mounds of uh, of data around how, if you look at some of the, the most recent reports coming out of McKinsey, more diverse organizations are higher performer, right? 25 to 35% higher performer, if you can really crack that code on gender and ethnic diversity. Um, and listen here, as we're sitting here, you know, as a tech company, when it, trying to win that war for talent, the future employees are voting with their feet as well. 40% of employees will turn a company down if they don't feel like there's an inclusive environment. So as a leader, I feel this is, you know, not just important for us in our mission to be the number one mobile gaming operator, but our success as an industry. Um, but, you know, to your question on the consumer side, it's a great one. Uh, and a lot of that starts with our support of female athletes. You know, even before sports betting was legalized, we were supporting the WNBA for years. We've done some great things with women's soccer, uh, this year, we were the first company to offer bets for women's basketball in uh, March Madness. Um, and uh, this this is a fun one, Contessa. We just had our uh, most recent consumer event coming out of COVID. It was called Fantasy. It was a, a great event in Miami on a private yacht. And there was a, a young woman named Rebecca, who is an NBA Bucks fan. She's waking up very happy. And uh, she was the grand prize winner of $150,000. So I think there's just a huge untapped potential for us here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.